were like red blazers and used one one of them used chest protectors where literally they held it instead of one one wore it under their shirts yeah. and one wore blazers and and carried a chest protector where they would literally hold it in their hands to to block the ball and it was known in 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 um the American League the the hot, there were no high strikes everything was low uh you know they would if it was anything above the waist they call it a ball they wouldn't call it a strike even though it was supposed to be knees to letters right in the in the in the National League, the National League was was a was a fastball league. It was just like mostly fastballs because it was a because you were facing pitchers who were batting and things like that. But then when they wanted to consolidate all the power the under one guy, value. they wanted well they were kind of breaking the unions. They wanted to consolidate all the power under Bud Selig. That's kind of what they did because Bud Selig was an owner. He was an owner. They made commissioner. You know the the commissioner was supposed to be the last independent one that they had. They fired. They fired Faye Vincent because well, the one before that died. Bar, uh, Paul Giamatti's yeah. dad, a, a Bartlett at Giamatti, yeah. uh, who's the president of Yale University. Yeah, who who they say? I mean, he he smoked and he had bad eating habits, but he was the guy who banned Pete Rose. Yeah. And the story was always that it took it out of him. You know, the, the the Pete Rose thing took it out of him. But who knows? So did he have twenty eight points? Did he? Well, how many points did uh, LeBron have? Do we know? Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. We got about fourteen commercial. And a lot of these left. jobs now, they, these commissions, they always seem to find the right guy in sports because they've always lasted a long time. Now. Well, there was an interesting thing in and just thinking about like uh, when they used to have other things. They used to have there used to be umpires AL only, NL only. When the umpires decided to um, strike, yeah, and they decided to submit their resignations as like a symbolic thing. They thought they had all the cars. They thought they had all the power. And Richie Garcia, I remember he was a terrible umpire when he was leading them. He submitted. So, like, let's just say, I'll make up a number here. Let's say 14 guys submitted their resignations to be like, you know, we'll show you we're how, how, how serious we are. Well, the Major League Baseball cherry-picked the bad umpires. Said, oh, really, Richie? Oh, really, Eric Gregg? Gone. Fired. Fired. Resignation? We'll accept it. We won't accept those guys who are good, but we'll accept yours. So these guys overplayed their hand. They resigned. Major League Baseball called their bluff, and they were out of a job. Now, there were smart guys like Country Joe West, the worst yes. umpire in baseball, knew better. He knew not to submit a resignation because they would have fired his fat butt in a second. <laughs> but uh, He's not going anywhere anytime soon either. He's, he's a he? horrible guy, horrible umpire. Yeah, I think he's umpire. in Tampa this week. And uh, C.B. Buckner's the worst. I mean, C.B. Buckner's the worst umpire in baseball. Actually, However, he threw me a foul ball one time, so I, I bet 20 also, years ago. Also, he was the home plate umpire for the Sammy Sosa Cork back game. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Say, there's a guy who's uh, what about Bruce disappeared Freddy? for the game. Bruce, Freddy. all these guys, they own, they they own and operate umpire schools. That's how they make their Bruce money. Bruce Fremming still does. Yeah, and the Wendell Stats have that umpire school. Fremming had umpire school. I always love when they have the replacement umpires for vacationing umpire. It's like vacationing umpire. You have a summer job. <laughs> why, why do you have to go on vacation? I mean, granted, everyone should have, gets vacation, but. You have a summer job, so working in the summer is... And you don't even you know, do much. No. And you get meals, and you get you know great hotels. Traveling. and Yeah, you get all those kind of great stuff. And uh, Yeah. yeah. Le- <clears throat> LeBron had 35, so he passed. Who, who, wow. Who yeah. was the umpire for George Brett's game that was there for a long time? Tim McClellan. That was his rookie year, too. <laughs> He's still around, isn't no, he? No, he retired about four years ago. Oh. Yeah, he was, that was six, he was six or four. He, he was a rookie umpire that year. Jim, Jim uh, Joyce. July 24th. 83 or 81? It couldn't have been 81 because they're on Jim Joyce is still around? J- no, Jim Joyce retired. He's the guy who called the famous... He's the guy, thanks to him, we have instant replay, essentially, because he's the guy who... Was it Andreas Galarraga? What was the... Uh, uh, Andreas Galarraga. Yeah, was throwing the perfect game. There's a guy whose career just... So who's going to be screaming strike when there's a strike? Yeah. 516-572-7440. 516-572-7440. And I think he's a Detroit native, or he's like a Michigan native. Uh, Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, Toledo, which, uh, Toledo, Ohio is a suburb of Detroit, essentially. So, well. uh, Guys, I just think that we're, mi- we're missing the big picture tonight. Just look at KJ, man. I, I just feel quiet. I know I've been there. waiting for this, but I just feel so well, sad that now It just means well. that the Knicks had a month start on getting golf reservations. Yeah, man. Uh, it's all right. Welcome. You know what I want to play right now? Two months. Two months, right. <laughs> right. I want to play the, the the Price is Right when you lose the game. <laughs> da-da, da-da, well, we get to have a console. Let's just, for you know, imaginary purposes, pretend there was a, con- a consolation game, right? So the Spurs against the Celtics. Who wins that series? Depends on who we have. 
Oh, if, if, if Isaiah, Isaiah would be done if he, he's done for the, he'd be done for the finals too. Isaiah Thomas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it would have to be these guys I as presently that would go to Game Seven. Surprisingly, that would be a great series, yeah, right? I think you got Lamarcus Aldridge, but you also have he hasn't even really showed up. But you have the Celtics, the Young Hunger. That would be a good series right now without Kawhi Leonard. That would I mean, actually be a good series. A, that's what I was like about the NIT. They have a consolation game. Yeah. Like the NCAA should have. They got the Final Four. I, I know what they're trying to say that the the last man standing do, doesn't lose. Yeah. Okay, so you lose your last game, blah, blah, blah. But a con- they used to have consolation games. The NIT, it's, it's great. So all of a sudden you have the Spurs play And you could do that Celtics. right now. Something to give us, put, for example, put that on Monday or something. That's right. While we have this whole People week are excited. Time. Basketball is. But I guess what it is is now you're asking millionaires to get excited for something that really doesn't well, count. Now they them. have media day. And now they have this day. Yeah. No. But you know what? you rather have this way. you rather have both teams healthy. So yeah. that this time around there's no excuses. Yeah, you know, I feel like I hate to say this. I feel like somebody's gonna go down in the game one. That's gonna define the whole series. I hope not, but yeah, that's true. I hope not. <clears throat> I hope. I just hope it lives up to. to it's got to live. It's got to live up to the hype, just because of the way that last year went. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, they're up. The Warriors were up three games to one. Yeah, and the Cavaliers came back to win four games to three, and so then the Warriors had to. Address that by going and signing Kevin Durant, mm. right? So it's like a chess game, chess match. You know, it's like okay, you do that. Here's our move. Oh, here's our move. Here's our move. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I, I I think that this should be really really exciting, and people who are not basketball fans will still watch because it has drama. Yeah, everybody says it's going to come down. To and Kevin they're doing Durant. a good. And and LeBron James is a household name. Yeah, and they're doing a good job making Stephon Curry a household name. Yeah. That, that that Chase Ping Pong commercial. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, with yeah, Serena. Yeah, you he's know good. that's well, a, not going to come down. That's to a Kevin great Durant. commercial. Well, you know why he's with Chase, right? Because the new arena is Chase Center. There's a Chase Center everywhere. Remember when the uh, the 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 Mavericks played the Heat in the uh, championship series? It's like we're at eight. We're at American Airlines Center, and tomorrow will be a, one's Dallas, one's Miami. They're yeah. both American, American Airlines Airline Centers. Center. Yeah, yeah like, Chase Bank. And now you got like, like Chase. There's a Chase Ball Park, right? That's where the Demonics yeah. play. There's Chase, which is kind of interesting. So, so Chase can be in San Francisco? Yes, across the bay. Which is just really odd because Chase doesn't – their footprint in San Francisco isn't really that big. But they must Maybe have they're trying. They must, that's what it is. They, you want to be a Silicon Valley bank is what you want to be. So, you know, which is very interesting that in the 80s when a, ba- a bank called Chemical Bank actually bought Chase Manhattan – but Chase Manhattan was the bigger name that that became the surviving thing. So the bigger entity was like, look, we're chemical. No one knows who we are. Let's go with the Chase name. That's that's what happened. We've got about eight oh. commercial free minutes left. Five one six five seven two seven four four. My grandfather always tells me a story about how he started. I started at Penn International Bank. And they got bought out by Chemical, and then Chemical uh, got bought out by Chase. These people talk about Manny Hanny Manufacturers Hanover's Trust. That was a big, <laughs> that was a big bank. Manny Hanny, a lot of people out there, and they used to. Uh, when they used to have Helmet Day at Shea Stadium, Manufacturers Hanover's Trust would 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 um, would be the sponsor. So you get the helmet, and then in big letters, it would have like an orange on the where you if, if you're a catcher, you were in it backwards. You would say Manufacturers Hanover's Trust, but there was a trick. If you put Scotch tape, you can lift it off. So you would do this to to, to get rid of the uh, the sponsor name on the, on the helmet. So uh, the little tricks well, you do. You know what I, I which thing I, I like, but I'm very I don't like to give up things. The cap trade day, you know, like they say, if you have an old hat, come, come trade it. And oh, really? And they okay. give you another hat, so they call it the ca- oh, cap trade. That's interesting. They don't want to sell another hat. They'd rather just you know trade. I guess they donate it to whoever. Right, that makes it, sense. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but it's it's a, it's a promotion they do, and it's not a bad. It's kind of like the gun exchange kind of thing. But you don't they don't give you a new one yeah. for that. <laughs> they give you. Give certificates to different places. And the the like. Mets have pretty weird uh, promotions, and and for some reason they're having uh, uh, Michael Conforto write-in day because you know if you remember when the season started, Conforto was either going to be in the minor leagues or be the fourth outfielder. Never mind that he's got 13 home runs and he's tearing it up. So he's not the all-star ballot for outfielders as Mets representatives was Cespedes, Granderson, and Bruce. So no, if if you want Conforto, you got to you got to write him in. Mm-hmm. He's not going to win, but they're having like an event to oh, you know, with the internet you can write him in. It's easier than it was but before. I don't understand is the point is why is it they only have promotions on the weekends when pe- the weekend kind of sells itself in a way. You know what I mean? They don't yeah, have yeah. promotions during come the week. Anyway, yeah. People, they don't have promotions during the week. Is it so that maybe they sell out more on the weekends? 
and that during the week it's like eh. Right, kind of what it is. Also the um, the the thing with the uh, like the after school stops because there's like seven oh five games and seven thirty five games because they so that that has to do with. With school being in session, Friday seven thirty five games. Yeah, well, they, that new thing this year. But they, or six, there's a new Friday time, I think. Well, how about the the Long Island Ducks? They play at six thirty five. Their games. Well, that's great. You know so. why? Because that way the kids are not out as late. And we will be giving away tickets next Thursday show, June first, to TC the uh, Long Island Ducks at Beth Page Ballpark. Not to be called the Beth Page Ballpark. It's Beth Page Ballpark because that's very important to say that. Just like, just like Eurythmics, not the Eurythmics. Just like Offspring, not yeah. the Offspring. So, there yeah. You know. Just like Celtics, not the Celtics. No, no, no. There's the Celtic Football Club is Celtic, but the Celtics are the Boston Celtics. Who get the number one pick, courtesy of the. So wait, I have a question. Who's Brooklyn the Nets? Nets? The Nets? The Long Island or the Brooklyn? They're both. Same, same thing. <laughs> yeah, they're both bad teams. They're they're both teams trying, hoping to make it in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. Is it, the Long Island Nets have been highlighting this guy called J, named JJ Moore. He's from Brentwood. So. Well, I will say that the Long Island Nets, that guy who's gonna be there, who is their head coach. He's a young guy. He's like thirty years old. Uh, no red. He is the he's the future. So we should book him as a guest because if you get to know him, he's a guy who's going to be a head coach yeah. someday in the NBA. So he's a good guy to know. Yeah. Just, just like my old uh, college friend Monty Williams. Who is you know he? what? It, we know this. This is weird because it's like the first time that this probably happened to me in the sense of when a team beats my team, I actually want them to lose. But this time around, I want the Cavs to win. Well, my, I don't because how arrogant Kevin Durant is. I want I wanted to be known that there's no shortcuts and, when it comes to a championship. And you, and you can say, you know, we lost to the champs. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was my dad's theory. My dad's theory was you root for the team that beat your team because it helps your team look better. You know. Plus, my dad always said like, if the Phillies beat the Mets, he was a Mets fan. Well, a they're in the same division, and b they're the team that beat yours. But I could never root for the Braves. I would never root for the Braves. Yeah, yeah. I'm never rooting for a team that beat my team. So right. should I always be happy that I'm a Jets fan since we always lose to the Patriots? Yeah. No, well, at least you get to That's say. That's different. I hate the Patriots. Yeah. yeah. Like when you when, when those like Patriots, the Patriots. Yeah, when those Patriots and Giants Super Bowl, you're just sitting there like. That's, the, that's, the, that's both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah imagine true. me doing the Braves Yankees World Series. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do now? <laughs> Can there be a nuclear war right now? Yeah, you know, something, something could break out right Can now. Can Trump do something yeah. now? <laughs> he's, a, he's a way. Yeah. He's making the, uh, you know, it's the, the it's Pope good. Brown. It's good with the collective bargaining agreements like that the president can't touch the NBA or the NFL. Like They're in a separate entity of themselves. Cause trust and believe he would try to do something like that. If you get rid of the director of the FBI, you really well, think you could do anything he, in the world? Well, part of what happened to the USFL was Donald Trump wanting to go head-to-head with the NFL. And the USFL was doing quite well in the spring. But he decided he wanted to compete head to head against the NFL because he thought it would force a merger. The way that in the seventies, the the World Football League WFL merged with some teams with the NFL. That didn't happen. AFL, you mean? Uh, AFL, sorry, WFL. No, yeah, the AFL in the sixties, and the WFL was in the seventies with with Zonka and Kick and the like. Uh, so. We'll be closing up soon as we get ready for Riley with FM Punk. And don't forget, on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock on a Saturday, you can hear Piano Man on 90.3 right here on Saturday morning. I'll be live Memorial Day weekend, Saturday 9 a.m., so get your uh, calls in uh, to 516-572-7440 and stay tuned for Riley with FM Punk. And you guys got big Memorial Day plans? Work. Country club season. Uh, Yeah, nothing crazy. And don't forget the reason for Memorial Day might be barbecues, might be beach, whatever, but it's for people who gave the ultimate sacrifice, right, to uh, lay down their life in defense of their country or because of events related to them being Americans. So, uh, yeah, we should, we should remember that. Get your Buy your poppies uh, from the veterans that are out there when you walk outside the supermarket. Have you ever seen them out there selling or anything? For a dollar, you know, do the poppy. Read up on it. Read up on how they came from, from World War I and, uh, and the like. And so we'll uh, start the closing music. Right about now. There we go. All right, we'll let we'll go left to right this time. Mark Tukowski. I got a bone to pick with the City University of New York. Please pull out of the Puerto Rican Day Parade, and please do not let Linda Sorcer speak at a, at a graduation. All right, KJ, welcome to the club. That's <laughs> Tristan Hamilton. KJ Brooks. See you guys next week. <laughs> All right, when when the when we'll have the series of the Warriors and Cavs starting up. Bye, everybody. Don't forget Piano Man, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm Chris Muldoon. He's Tristan. He's Mark. He's KJ. We thank you so much 
Linux years. We will see you in the airways. Stay tuned for Riley and FM Pub. <laughs>